Welcome back. We are ready to kick off our first semi-final of the day. And I'm looking forward to seeing this because it is going to be a, uh, a pretty interesting one because we've not really seen it ha- happen too often. It's going to be Tice versus Viper, but it's going to be the Maligos Druid versus Zoo. I know you've got you've gained at least a bit more faith in Zoo in this format, in this tournament this week, Sol. But how does it do versus the Maligos Druid? Because this isn't the Maligos Druid we saw maybe a couple of weeks ago. This actually plays some early game answers and not just all all greed. It does, but the answers still really aren't solid enough on average, I would argue. Like, you know, even losing Bog Beam, which is a a useful tool that you might want to have for the size of some of the minions, you know, like Crystal Power and Hero Power isn't going to answer a Dark Glare. It's not like the board goes wide with lots of one health minions. The minions are generally chunkier than that with, you know, four health minions, five health minions, random three drops getting generated, which are quite large. So Swipe isn't a very effective AoE. Um, really, I think in this matchup, the game plan is going to have to be the same as it is in most matchups uh, for the Malagos Druid, and that's ramp and tempo swing. Like, that's basically the only chance they're really going to have. You know, quick guardian animals or super ramp into, like, you know, Mali moonfires to be able to tempo swing the board, for example, because otherwise I'm uh, not seeing too big of a chance. And even then, if that opportunity does come around, Viper's version of the deck even includes Brittlebone Destroyer that we're not seeing from Tom60229 in APAC, right. for example. So he actually still has the ability to fight back uh, against a big board swing on, on Tice's side. And also as well, because this is Specialist, uh, it does interest me greatly that we might see that secondary deck from Tice going into Game 2, maybe even regardless of outcome of Game 1, because it removes the Maligos package, it adds an animated broomstick, two bees and most importantly for me Sol, the two lake threshers which do get work done versus zoo they are the right shape to actually clean up a board even if it's a little bit more difficult in normal circumstances so i'm excited just to see what this like very unique build of druid uh, with a secondary deck can do against a deck like zoo yeah, and I, again, I love that strategy that they've gone with with the secondary deck where it's, well, how do we make Mali Druid more consistent <laughs> against aggro? And someone in their call is just like, yeah, we can't. Hey, what if we just don't play Mali Druid with our secondary deck? What if we just cut all the Mali stuff? By Jove, he's got it. Let's do that. So they, <laughs> they cut the Mali, they cut the Omu, they cut the Germination, they cut Double Breath of Dreams, and they uh, replace it with Lake Thresher, which might not be obviously an anti-aggro card, but it absolutely is because it's the nuts of your Guardian Animals, which I was just saying is you know one of the biggest oh, ways that you have to fly back against aggro uh, if you're able to get some of that ramp as well. Yeah, no, it, it, sometimes the simplest answers are the best, aren't they? Can you make Mali Druid work? No. Then don't try. You know, yeah. like, I, I love it. I think it's genius, actually. It's super cool. Uh, we are going to go straight into this game, though. Game number one, Tice on the top on this Maligos Druid. Unfortunately for him, although I'm sure he would love to, he cannot queue his secondary deck for game one. He has to queue the primary. So this Ooh. is the weakness where Viper will definitely want to be taking this game number one, no matter what. Tice has access to some ramp, but oh, indeed, Sol, because Viper's opening hand does not look too shabby either. I was actually reacting to Tice's hand. Tice has okay. got exactly the kind of juice I was talking about. Like, sure, the Gidra overgrowth turn, unlikely to work out because uh, Viper will have enough board presence to deal with it. But just growth into animals, like, that's what you want in the matchup as far as I'm concerned. It's the only real way you're going to have uh, to fight back early enough. And, and Tice has exactly that. Yeah, and uh, 100% agree. Uh, this is what you want to be able to try and fight back. But... There's nothing else right now. And I just see on Viper's side the Flame Imp. There's also the Merchant if he wants to go Merchant into Giant because there's no silence effects or kind of weird punishes that you can think about with Priest. Yep. You know, steal the Merchant away before it dies. Then there's the Tour Guides for the free Life Tap. So although I, I'm with you on Tice having a decent opening hand, uh, it, it, it's not a done deal, is it, by any means? Time waits for no one. I feel like taking nine here, Raven. I guess you don't no. technically take nine. You could hero power it this turn and then Gidra into Gidra, it next yeah. turn. Yeah. And why not, right? Gidra's still worth. alive after that. Yeah. Arguably worth. Especially yeah, if you were to see a honestly. if you were to see a turn two tap here from Viper, which is you know, not that unusual for Zoo to be doing with the way the the deck is built right now then you actually have the potential to land Gidra uncontested on board and ramp into Overgrowth, which would be insane. Mm. It could also be mm. like a tall guide tap coin play potentially here from Viper. 
Mm. So he can get the 1-1 one, one and the expired merchant down, and it gets the flash giant reduced, and then he can tall guy tap next turn to reduce more. Doesn't have to, of course, depending on what this tap goes into, but I, I do like how him having the option here. Ray's dead. Yeah, I think I like holding onto the coin okay. for flexibility here with uh, Dark Glares, Disease Vultures, whatever might come in the future. Even just, you know, one turn quicker on a Flesh Giant potentially could be huge against Druid because I don't think you have to get super greedy with the Flesh Giant in this matchup. If you play it down on, you know, turn 4 or turn 5 when it costs 4 or 5 and it's just an 8-8 eight, eight against Druid, it's still likely to get a lot of work done. Yeah, there was a time in Hearthstone that a 4-mana 8-8 eight, eight, uh, was pretty powerful, actually, <laughs> on, on Curve at least. Now we see Tyus going, getting hero power into that tour guide and still that flame imp is just going to start stacking up some damage. I put pretty certainly starting off with a life tap here. Yeah, if he were to hit uh, Skull of Gul'dan here, oh sorry, Hand of Gul'dan here, it would line up perfectly with the Flesh Giant just getting below the cost of the six cost Hand of Gul'dan. So he would have been able to uh, explode with the card draw there instead. Do you like getting a merchant here though? Because it is just going to die. In worst case, he could actually talking of extremes, he could kill it off himself if Tice is gonna ignore it, right? And take that approach. He has that ability. He also could have just played an 8-8 this turn, right? In some way. He could have just raised dead for one more source of damage and just coined the 8-8 straight up. Just had an 8-8 in play. Might have been worth looking yeah, at. Yeah, I hmm. Yeah, maybe I get too locked into this, but I I I love the idea that you can just have two 8-8s very soon, <laughs> which seems pretty powerful to me. It does. Yeah, though, if he played Nightshade, he would throw away that expired merchant. Is that too much of a problem? I, don't I think th so. Well, I think so. More importantly, I think we've just seen your opponent overgrowth, and you know pretty much the one way they're going to win the matchup is overgrowth into Guardian Animals, right? So. Much like the Druid Mirror, where you want to react with your Rush Minions from Guardian Animals into their Guardian Animals a lot of the time, that dynamic might be the same here, where Viper That's doesn't true. want to throw out Nightshade Matron and then just let Di uh, Tice, let Dice? Let Tice uh, <laughs> dictate the trades. Uh, let on the, the following Dice turn. roll. Yeah. Let Dice dictate the trades was uh, what was about to come out of my mouth, mm -hmm. I think. Yeah, I like this. Hold back the uh, the nightshade to potentially react. So he will still have it here. Obviously, if Guardian Animals comes down, he has the ability to trade and get the nightshades back again. And and also, this just gets the most out of every single one of his cards as well, right? He doesn't yeah. have to throw away the merchant right now. He can hold off. He does raise dead as a backup. It, this looking at it does just do the most here. And if uh, and because we said earlier, Tice isn't running the Threshers in this list, then. Even if he goes the, the worst case for Viper, which is this Guardian Animals, it's still only two attacks. And Viper has a couple more minions than two on the board right now. Yeah, there was actually an opportunity to divert there for Tice potentially with uh, Gidra Germination, which, you know, just talking of number of attacks, does give him more clearing power. He gets four yeah. from the, the double Wind Fury. I think was uh, pretty exciting. But this also has the upside that you're seeing, which I was just leading into of the card draw coming through and finding those Anubis Ass Defenders, which are in this uh, slightly more naturally anti-aggro build of Malagos Druid that Tyson and Casey are running. Yeah, we spoke about this yesterday, and Anubis Ath, along with maybe Crystal Power, but honestly, the Anubis Ath, it's just the saving grace of the deck when yep. you're against more aggressive lineups, right? If, if that card wasn't there, you get so many more problems. It really is just a, a solid inclusion overall. This is the turn, yep. though. This pop-off can be potentially yep. monstrous. The Flesh Giants inside one of these merchants are ridiculously cheap at this point. With he that Raised Dead going off, the Flame Imp going off, he played an additional Flame Imp on the previous turn. He also tapped on the previous turn. So many yeah, and I, I like Viper many. dumping the whole hand here, right? He can do everything. He can Soul Fire, not discard anything, and then get the Giants, right? Yeah, he's also got... The Nightshade Matrons to think about, though, whether he won there's any reason for him to play those this turn. Um, which, again, there's not necessarily any huge downside of, uh, of emptying hand first. He's going to go about it differently. There okay. are those Flesh Giants. can get them down to one with the Flame Imp, zero with the Life Tap. Ooh, Colt Neophyte. 
That's actually a big pickup. Guessing? I, I'm, I'm assuming the Viper locked everything in here. Did he not play the Neo fight? No. Okay, 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 okay. Okay, okay. he did. Oh, okay. Yeah, I think so. I, that that I, was. Oof. I think the reaction at the end was just like, was that the best turn, right? Because it's so hard right, to say right. based on all of the options that he had, and we were heavily debating as well. Like, I, I think the line to dump your whole hand initially was a real possibility, but you know, you saw the upside of the way Viper did it, where he got to see a tap first, which mm -hmm. then changed his turn, right? Because the Neophyte was a better play for him than the Spirit Jailer, which he could have played first before the Soulfire. Um, so there's definitely like different options and different lines that you could have taken there. What was his issue there? Um, or maybe, I'm just... I'm, I, again, the end of the turn was weird because he locked in all the things before we could see them. Mm. But did, could he have actually just played the Neophyte before he Soulfired? And then was that what he was yes. maybe reacting yeah, to? Yeah, I think Is that's that probably He could true, have yeah. thrown the Neophyte if he just he, uh, and messed up the whole turn because look how good Neophyte is now. Yeah. Um, so if he'd throw, if the Soulfire discarded the Neophyte, the turn would be significantly worse. Right. Right. The uh, germination here weirdly gonna oh no, help out. It's a buff. Yep. <laughs> just a straight up buff. Fortunately, the uh, small one gets taunt. No way to uh, to spell burst it. Tice will know that there's one nightshade. Well, that he'll know there's two nightshade matrons in hand. Yep. One definitely playable, which means one off. Hyper, yeah. if I'm looking at it correct, he is simply at one. The problem is though, oh. Tice just gets what a swipe off the top. He just wins. That's not a swipe. It's not. It was close though, right? That's it scary. Was, yeah. He just has the blooms to just swipe straight up. Yeah. <laughs> Viper even here skipping the hero power. Like hero power, you'd be yeah, dead yeah. to like Mali, Moonfire, Bloom, hero power, stuff like that. Correct. Yeah, Viper's definitely in his bag right now. He is replaying this entire game in his yep. head and making yep. sure that he's trying to optimize it. Whatever it is he's come up with, he doesn't look too happy uh, with the way things are played. But he will at least be uh, somewhat happy with the result as the expected outcome does come down. He does go 1-0 up in the series. Um, but he n might now have to deal with a slightly more optimized anti-aggro build of the deck. And so if it weren't for the Lake Threshers, which I absolutely agree are just by far the best possible card that Tice could have in this matchup, I would almost argue that like maybe still being Mali Druid is just something that you'd want to do in this matchup because I was going to make that point while we're talking about it in the intro. But on balance, I think like the Lake Thresher animated broomstick stuff is just too powerful to ignore. I think right. that is probably your best shot. But I think generally when you're trying to counter Zoo, I think it's a mistake to like, categorize it to like file it away under a for aggro in your head and then use anti-aggro cards to try and beat it because that's not really what the deck does it's not like a classic aggro deck where it's a bunch right. of small efficient minions it's huge threats really quickly and um, but the one weakness is that even when they're winning they win the game on like 8 to 10 HP most of the time. So suddenly, like, just being a Mali Druid, you saw it at the end of that game, right? Like, you almost always have that tiny, tiny out where you can punish them for being too aggressive. But yeah, I think, I think on balance, like, you saw the Guardian Animals turn, the difference that would have made if it was Twilight Runner Lake Thresher or Double Lake oh, Thresher huge, as huge. opposed to the Teacher's Pet coming through the other way. So I would still expect uh, Tice to be going for what looks to be his anti-aggro build here with the secondary deck. Yeah, I, I think so too, and he has changed. And and I will say, I agree that you can just get them, but the problem is, like, would he have needed to just put, get that top deck so if he could have gotten rid of the board earlier, right? Yep. Like, he wouldn't right. have been at one, right? So, um, you look at these tools as well, the two Bs, well, they kill a Dark Glare, no matter what, right? Because mm -hmm. they, they go through Taunt as well, so the two Bs, the Threshers, I think this is a good choice here, and Ty's probably wishing he had a Crystal Power last game, because that Flaming did uh, run a month. <laughs> oh, oh, Viper's oh. just won! Oh. <laughs> Pack it up! Pack it up, next series, no need to run this one out. And and I will say for Viper, just as this game's about to kick off, 
although he might be, you know, overthink or thinking a lot about that previous game and those turns, he needs to forget that, focus on this game, and he can he can look at that later today or tomorrow. You know what I mean? Like I think that's very important not to get too caught up in a in a previous game or previous turns. Yeah, sure. Here though, oh, this is just an opening hand, isn't it? Hmm. It's just gas. Question though. I would say in a more regular matchup, coin into Dark Glare would look very appealing. Uh, but knowing that now Tyus has a potential oh, chance to just one. have bees, is it something you think Viper's going to actually uh, avoid? As per to just choose a different or di uh, better turn, but just actually avoid just dropping out a Dark Glare that's without getting some kind of immediate payoff? Yeah, it is now, I think. Um, well, actually... No, he still has three available to him this turn, right? With the with the bloom ramp. But I was gonna say it, it the answer depends on what Tice does this turn, because if Tice had like just crystal powered the flame imp, you can actually get quite a lot of immediate payoff from your Dark Lair, right? With coin, Dark Lair, Raise Dead, get your Flame Imp back, play the Flame Imp, play the right. you know, whatever other card you drew, etc. Like you could actually just make a huge board right then. Um so if that had happened, I think we might have just seen the immediate Dark Lair pop off, but since it didn't and his Raised Dead isn't active, I think he's going to wait for uh, until he can get some immediate value out of the Dark Lair. Looking at this, immediate value might happen because even if it's just this one minion, this one minion specifically actually procs Dark Glare oh. once again. And now, oh, okay, well, let's just go back to the drawing board. So, oh, this is why I love this deck so much. Every single turn feels like you can make 50 different choices and at least half of them are good. Yes. You just play the merchant, right? Just mm. just fill up on, on the hand and see what you can do next turn. Gives more Gee. chance for the Neophyte to die and then go with the Raised Dead the turn after. You can just do the same thing with the Dark Lair right now. You get the mana for the merchant back again. Sure. Sure. And then just have the opportunity to just pop off even further based on those draws. Yeah, like, yeah. like right uh, now. I, I think as long as the merchant play is, is gets played, I'm happy regardless because mm. it's just good to back up with a Vulture, right? Is Viper working out whether he taps? I think so, right? He can tap. He can tap, yes, but if he... Yeah, I think he's just considering ordering. Because, um, for example, if he spends two mana right there on something that doesn't refresh his crystals, he then has to commit to using coin. Um, and then, of course, there's the sequencing between everything right. else. He's left himself a lot to do in a short amount of time yet again, and he keeps Wait, drawing what? gas. He keeps drawing gas. <laughs> I don't oh. want to see the all of these zoo turns done in 10 seconds, Raven. It gives me anxiety. This zoo deck stresses me out when I sit there and make a turn early. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe for different reasons. But um, but yeah, this is tense. And Viper, again, it, not happy with that turn. I think, he yeah. had, I think he had something better he could do there. You can tell. But this is why the deck's hard. Like, the deck isn't just, oh, you play loads of minions in a turn and go face. Mm. So some games it is. But the way you can do that, this Dark Lair opens up so many options, especially when you throw Pen Flingers into the mix. Yeah, it I is agree. Hard. It's hard to pilot. Completely agree. I think on that occasion, his uh, coin and vulture sequencing was potentially out of whack, and he potentially could have got more juice out of that right. over, yeah. over the long term. And, but again, you know, there's there's a lot going on with these deck and the turns are extremely complicated. And this is something that, you know, I have noticed from Viper in particular, oh. is that he spends a long time thinking about his initial decisions. But then there's like six other branches on the decision tree that come up after that that he's not really prepared to deal with towards right. the end of the turn. Look at this Flesh Giant active. And honestly, looking at the deck list, when I saw the Pen Flingers included from Viper this week, I was a bit like, there isn't that many spells and the thing is there doesn't need it to doesn't be that many spells be. that if you if you bounce it once in a game that's yeah. pretty good because yeah. it's one mana gain two mana <laughs> effectively it's kind yep. of an innovate yeah, exactly. <laughs> which, which, is, which is crazy I think like the best way to look at it is that there's a real argument that this deck might just play Elven Archer if it was if it came down to it right so why right. not play Elven Archer with a little bit of upside sometimes yeah now it's just a whole lot of nothing. Tice can go yeah, blue into Ysera, but it doesn't quite achieve what he needs it to because he can't draw. And it's a shrug from Tice, and he knows he just, he just couldn't really do anything. But again, Viper rewarded with that 2-0 victory, but also continuing to show that he's rewarded for this deck choice in, in yep. this specialist format. 
it's just doing the exact job he wanted it to do. You can't really argue with the results. You can't, no, but I do also want to commend Tice and his practice group, um, you know, led by Casey. I actually got that information from Tice this morning. I was talking to him a little bit this morning, and I said, like, I really think your group has nailed the prep this week. I think Mally Druid surprised a lot of people. I think it was a fantastic pick. And Tice was very quick, actually, to hand the credit to Casey, who said that, you know, Casey is one, the one that really, like, puts a lot of the work in, and, you know, a lot mm. of us are, like, piggyback a little bit off what he's doing. Um, so, you know, shout outs to Tice for another great performance. Shout outs to Mally Druid for surprising a lot of people coming into this. But yeah, credit to Casey as well, who we're going to see uh, coming up now with a much better matchup for his Malagos Druid than, uh, than Tice may have had there. Because, yeah, Tice was also saying this morning, I'm going to have a short day today. My matchup is terrible. <laughs> yeah, and it, it just didn't get going. But that's also an maybe not an extra layer, but something you do consider. Again, the description of Zoo, and if, if you liken it to previous Zoo lists, this version is very different. It does not do the same thing. It's not really about taking insane value trades and keeping tempo on board. It's about just breaking the game, honestly, and just allowing yeah. you to have more mana in the early turns than you should ever be allowed. And that's just what it does. And you can see the pen flingers uh, as additional... Uh, additional concept for that where you can just keep gaining more mana and just make a turn that's too big to handle tice had options and he had some removal it was a bad matchup of course but it's nowhere near enough if you drop in an 8-8 along with a vulture along with something else all on turn four or turn five it's just too much so it's uh, definitely a sick deck and i i look forward to seeing a little bit more of it and i do hope it comes into the uh, the group stage going forward and who knows, maybe it makes it into the, uh, the Masters Tour that's coming up soon for Masters Tour Montreal because it's just a cool deck to cast. There's like 100 options every single turn. It's great. It absolutely is, yeah. And I think we will continue to see at least a little bit from Viper, I imagine, because he does seem to be a big fan of the deck overall. He, he's, you know, tweeting that he thinks people are sleeping on it, you know, not just in the Priest matchup, not just in the Mali Druid matchup, where we've uh, really seen it singing so far right. this week, but, you know, just as a deck overall. And uh, as we reach the end of the season and players are kind of scrapping it out for those top spots on ladder, I've seen a couple of tweets as well saying, hey, actually, you know what? Like, Zoom might be a little bit slept on. Like, here's my very, very low legend rank number that I've, I've hit with this deck. Um, so yeah, maybe maybe the uh, the age of Zoo is arriving, and maybe there is just a uh, a hidden layer of complexity behind the deck that's uh, that's really held it back from being as effective as possible up to this point. We will wait and see. I still remain unconvinced <laughs> outside of specialist format. Fully sold on specialist. It was the nuts this week, absolutely. Right. Um, but outside of specialist format, I I remain unconvinced. Yeah, we are going to flip the day on its head, at least a little bit so far. And we are going to move into our next match, which is Casey versus Psycho. And this is different because now the Druid has the favored matchup. And you're probably not going to see Casey, who is piloting that Druid very the same as Tice, uh, get stomped in a quick 2-0 victory. I think the onus is definitely going to be on Psycho, on Priest, to find some way to deal with this whether it's just uh, temp 